Hello and welcome to this film which is all about tertiary structure which for our purposes is the last type of structure that we look at with respect to proteins. Okay, and hopefully by the end of this film you'll see the way in which hydrogen bonds, disulfide bridges, ionic bonds and dispersion forces will give rise to something called the tertiary structure of a protein which you might remember from the introductory film is all about how the molecule folds up into a big three-dimensional shape. Okay, so the overall shape of a protein molecule, which is determined by the interactions between various side chains, is called its tertiary structure. Now, what do we mean by side chains? Well, they're the R groups of amino acids in the chain. Okay, so if the R group of one amino acid residue can interact with the R group of another as, uh, amino acid residue further along the chain, this will now give rise to the tertiary structure of a protein. Now, it might be hydrogen bonding, okay? But if the hydrogen bonding is between amide groups, remember that is secondary structure, okay? So if we're talking about tertiary structure, we're looking for side chains that can form hydrogen bonds with one another, okay? So here we can see that this side chain here which I'm going to highlight in green let's say so here is a side chain okay a side chain that happens to have an OH on it okay and here's another side chain that has an oxygen with a lone pair okay now hydrogen bonds form between these hydrogen atoms directly attached to oxygens and lone pairs on nitrogens oxygens or fluorines sorry this could be attached to a fluorine or a nitrogen too Okay, so here is a hydrogen bond between two different side chains. So it's not giving rise to the secondary structure of the protein, right? Because if it was, it would be between two amide groups. Can't actually see the amide groups in this chain. Okay, what other kind of interactions could you have between side chains? Well, you could have ionic bonds. Okay, so if you happen to have a side chain that maybe had a negative charge like this one, and another side chain that happened to have a positive charge, like this one. And we've seen how these things can occur in amino acids when we looked at zwitter ions. We, could, we saw that the amino groups could turn into ammonium ions, basically, NH3+. The fourth hydrogen has been replaced by this chain. So, And uh, the carboxylic acid groups of amino acids can turn into carboxylate ions, so CO2-. If we've got an attraction between two side chains that have positive and negative charges, then this is an ionic bond. And it's also giving rise to the tertiary structure of the protein. It's causing the chain to fold up in a particular way and give it its three-dimensional shape. What else could we have? Well, we could have things called disulfide bridges. Now, you've heard of hydrogen bonds and um, ionic bonds before, but disulfide bridges might be new to you. So here are two side chains, although they might look like one because they're actually covalently bonded together here. Okay, so if this side chain was able to form a covalent bond between its sulfur atom and this side chain sulfur atom, this would be called a disulfide bridge. So two sulfur atoms forming a bond together, that's a disulfide bridge. And again, you can see how this interaction, this kind of attachment between these two side chains is going to force this long chain to fold up in a particular way. So again, it's giving rise to the tertiary structure of our protein. And finally, we could have dispersion forces. Now, these are sometimes known as um, hydrophobic interactions because things that hate water are things that basically can't hydrogen bond with water because they can only form dispersion forces. So if we have a side chain like this benzene ring here, and this methyl group here, they're not polar. They can't form dipole-dipole interactions. They can't form hydrogen bonds. They can't form ionic bonds together. They can't form a disulfide bridge. But there are dispersion forces between them. And so these dispersion forces will hold them together, even if only weakly. And again, they'll influence the three-dimensional shape of our protein. Okay? These two groups here, likewise, they're non-polar, and so they'll form dispersion forces with each other. Now, what do we end up with? Well, like we said before, this giant molecule starts folding itself up into a big ball, basically, although it might not be very round. And so this three-dimensional shape, as we've said before, is influenced by all these interactions. Now, this diagram here makes a distinction between the secondary structure, which we can see here 
with these little red marks. Okay, so these are supposed to be hydrogen bonds, these red dashed lines, right? But if they're between amide groups, it's secondary structure. Here we've got a hydrogen bond between one side chain and another, so this is tertiary structure. Here we've got some dispersion forces. Here we've got an ionic bond. Here we've got a disulfide bridge. Okay, we might remember that when the chain twists up like this because of its, the hydrogen bonds in its secondary structure, we call that a helix. When it folds up into these sheets, it's called a pleated sheet. Okay, but remember the difference here between the secondary and the tertiary structure of the protein. Okay, so what should you be able to do when it comes to tertiary structure? Well, you should be able to look at a polypeptide chain and consider which parts of it are going to give rise to what kinds of um, interactions that might contribute to the tertiary structure. Okay, You should be able to name the types of interactions, so disulfide bridges, hydrogen bonds and so on. And you should be able to explain what the tertiary structure is, so that's the 3D structure of the molecule that comes about as a result of these interactions between side chains, not between amide groups. Okay, so once again, that's hopefully what we've learned. We've learned about how hydrogen bonds, disulfide bridges, ionic bonds and dispersion forces will influence the three-dimensional structure or the tertiary structure of a protein molecule. Hopefully it will make sense. If you've got any questions or comments, then please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.